By the end of this video, hopefully you will have a better understanding of a different classification of rums. Because in this video, I'm going to be talking through the basic differences between pot still, column still and blended rums. Hey rum fam, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Steve the Barman and I'm trying to help you on your rum journey by mainly focusing on rums and spiced rums under 50 pounds. Right then, blended rums. What do we mean by blended rums? Well, short story to start off with, I got taken to task this week about my classification of a blended rums. And to be fair to him, he was right. But after a little debate, we both kind of decided we were actually both right. Now, there are many ways to classify rums. We'll just talk you through some of the classifications to start off with that we've already mentioned on this channel. You will have heard me mention English, French and Spanish styles of rum. You'll have also heard me mention molasses based rums or cane juice rums. But then we've also got arguably the most popular classifications of rums. And that's talking about the colour, whether it's white rums, gold rums, aged rums, black rums, dark rums that would probably be the most popular way of classifying a rum. But we also have another way of classifying rums as well. Yeah, complicated, isn't it? So this other way of classifying rums, we're talking pot still, column still, and blended rums. This way of classifying rums is probably a little bit harder to the newbie because it does take a little bit of research to work out what's what. But it's also a different layer to blended rums as well, which is a term that I've been using quite a bit recently. So let's shallow dive in. Now remember, I am not rum guru level on this, so I'm just gonna be talking about the bare entry level basics. On screen now is a picture of a pot still typical in quite a lot of Jamaican rums. Pot stills are traditionally made out of copper and typically produce a higher ester, a richer, more robust, more flavoursome rum. Just think that Jamaican funk or hogo that we sometimes refer to. But they are also more labour intensive because they will need cleaning out after every distillation run. Now on screen is a picture of a column still. And column stills can be made from copper or stainless steel. And column stills can actually refer to continuous distillation as well. So not like a one pot distill, like a, a copper pot. We are talking like continuous distilling. Think like Bacardi, where the distillation process just goes on and on and on and on until that point where it need, they shut down and clean it all out and then restart again. Now, column stills typically create a kind of cleaner, lighter and more pure style of rum or distillate. And some may think less character as well. But in terms of less character, we just mean they won't produce those kind of typical funky rums that a, a pot still will. And other differences between the two types as well is the kind of higher ABV, a typical pot still will top out somewhere between 60 and 80% ABV, whereas a column still is renowned to go a lot higher, up to 96% ABV. Now that's not to say a distiller will always distill to that top end ABV, it's just showcasing the difference. But as we know from a previous video, the ABV of a rum really does change the characteristics. But of course that final finished rum will always depend on the skills of the distiller, the skills of the blender, then you've course you've got the terroir and the climate and also don't forget those base raw materials as well. So going back to classifications, some rums will be pot still, think Smith and Cross, Rum Bar, Hamden, Worthy Park, Rain Nephew and the Plantations Imaca. But then some rums will also be entirely column still as well. So we think Angostura, think Flor de Cania, think um, Santiago de Cuba, think Bacardi, think Ron Cube, think the plantation of Guatemala and Belize. And you've also got other brands like Don Q and Methuselah. So are you a little bit clearer on the differences between pot still and column still? If so, then make sure you smash that like button because that will help me put this video in front of more of the rum fam. And speaking of rum fam, if you would like to check out my membership community, which will help you on your rum journey, I post the regular membership videos, We've got cocktail ebooks. We've got a private Discord area as well, not to mention the new uh, live show after parties. Then do check out the link in the description below or in the pinned comment because we would all love you to come and join us on your rum journey. Okay, so I've chatted about column still rums and I've chatted about pot still rums. But what are blended rums? So the term blended rums traditionally refers to rums 
from one distillery that contained pot and column still rums. Distilleries will have both types of still on site, which will then create completely different rums. They'll then barrel them and age them. And then when they're ready, they'll finally blend them together and bottle them into the finished rum. So think rums from uh, El Dorado, the DDL in Guyana, Diamond Distilleries Limited. Think uh, Dorley's Real McCoy and the Four Square Rums. Think Chairman's Reserve and all their rums from St. Lucia. Mount Gay on Barbados as well and their rums. And then Plantation, to be fair, most of the Plantation rums will be blended. So thinking about what I've just told you in the examples I've just shown you, comment below. Are you a pot still, a column still, or a blended rum fan. So going back to the start, when I said I was, I got called out for referring to blended rums, where was I going wrong? Well, as I said, I wasn't really going wrong. I was just referring to a whole new style of blended rums. And of course, I say new style, but this would also kind of be relevant to Navy rums as well from way back in the day. It's just that more and more brands are bringing out these styles of rum, which don't necessarily refer to Navy style. But in fairness, I should really be classifying these rums as kind of multi-island or multi-country rums, or in fact, even multi-distillery rums. Because yes, while they are still blended from different types, they come from, when blended traditionally refers to one distillery, these are coming for multiple distilleries. But the reason I've been mentioning these types of rums a lot recently is because they are fast becoming firm favorites with me. Now I've thought of this and kind of ignoring the sort of Navy rum vibe, I think this was probably one of the very first kind of multi-country, multi-island blended rums that I ever tried. This rum from Plantation de Grand Añejo is a blend of Guatemala and Belize, two neighboring mainland countries. Uh, but this rum is actually a blend of two different column still rums. Other multi-island or multi-country or multi-distillery rums that I have here as well, uh, think uh, the Veritas or Probitas in the US to you guys. This is a blend of uh, Foursquare and Hamden rums a blend of pot and coffee column still rum as well. And then I've got Black Top, which is a blend of column and pot still rums from Guyana, from Jamaica and Barbados. And then I've also got this brand, uh, the Lovers and the Forza. And in all honesty, I don't know whether they're column or pot still rums in here, but I'm guessing from the countries involved, we have got a blend, a proper blend of sort of column and pot still rums going into both of these. And then of course, I can't not mention my favorite turtles saving friends, Lost Years. Again, these rums are a blend of column and pot still rums, uh, kind of multi-island all over the Caribbean. There'll be even more coming. Now, the reason I love these kind of multi-island, multi-country rums, if you like, is because of the different layers involved in that rum. When you take a sip, it really does take you on a different journey. Different notes come out at different stages. So am I wrong to call these blended rums? Well, not really, but then I do understand why the traditionalist did call me out. But like everything in life, things move on. But from now on, I will try to refer to these rums as kind of a blend of, I don't know which term to kind of rock out, but multi-island, multi-country, multi-distillery, what, what should we call them? Now, again, in the comments below, have you tried any multi-island blends of rum? If so, which ones and which ones are your favorite? Now, if you love this video and found it helpful, then I'd urge you to check out this video as well, because that will help you get into sipping rums. And if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, hit the like button on your way out.